Oh, hang on just one second here. Yeah, I'm going to pin you so I don't see the fathom. Hey there, welcome back to the Awesome Life Podcast, where my guests and I inspire you to be more of what you already are. Just be engaged and, and enjoy life. Basically, have an awesome life. That's what we're talking about. And my guests are here to share tips and wisdom and most of all, inspiration for ways and means to uh, make that all happen. And my guest today is no exception, Sophie Lechner. And did I pronounce that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yay. <laughs> Uh, Sophie actually helps mission-driven entrepreneurs find their audience on LinkedIn and build relationships uh, with them as they spread their message and grow their business. No wonder I love her. I love LinkedIn too. Her 20 years experience uh, presence on LinkedIn has led to speaking engagements, podcast invitations, clients, and a Forbes interview, Forbes interview, excuse me. She has the magnet model for entrepreneurs so that they can stop chasing clients and instead enjoy sharing their gifts with dream clients that they attract like a magnet. So uh, welcome, welcome to the Awesome Life Podcast, Sophie. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Karen. I really appreciate it. Oh, this is great. And I, I we met not too long ago and on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Hence, uh, this is where you actually were able to get a, a podcast interview, right? Right, right. Yeah, it's a great place for that. It it truly, truly is. And I, I'm wondering... Um, what got you into LinkedIn? What got you into this, this realm of, of helping entrepreneurs find themselves on LinkedIn? Yeah, so it, initially it wasn't entrepreneurs. When I started on LinkedIn was when it first launched. I loved it. I fell in love with it immediately. Um, I had uh, parents of two different nationalities. And so when I was growing up, we were always traveling. We were always meeting people from all over. And so the value, I always appreciated the value of all these different connections. And so when LinkedIn you know, was launched, I, I thought, wow, this was made for me. It was just exactly what I, what I loved. And so I started immediately to connect with everybody I knew and, family and friends and I've studied in different countries so it was a great way for me to, to get my network together you know and um, I was in a global uh, company then Pfizer and so I had colleagues as well all over the world and so I connected with them and then I started to connect with new people that I didn't know and I loved that so that's kind of how I became really enamored with the platform and it was much, much later, uh, you know, like 15 years later, 12, whatever, um, that I actually left corporate and started a business. And all of a sudden, I, I you know, it was much easier to create the, the, the momentum I needed for my company because I had all these connections. So I, I, I built partnerships with people in several countries because I just connected with one person or contacted, you know, someone I knew, for example, in Istanbul, we developed a partnership. I just reached out and said, who else do you know, you know, who's interested in this and, and, and organize a whole trip to go there and meet partners. I mean, it's just extraordinary, the value of LinkedIn. So that's how it all started. And then what happened during the pandemic was uh, all the entrepreneurs I had around me um, were really panicked about their business development. And I said, well, you don't need to, you know, be too anxious about it. You've still got LinkedIn and that's not affected by the pandemic, right? And a lot of people around me said, well, what do you mean? Like, what you, LinkedIn, what? And 
so I started giving a lot of um, free coaching sessions to the entrepreneurs around me to show them how to use LinkedIn. And I discovered how much LinkedIn was just ignored by so many entrepreneurs and just not understood, or there were a lot of myths, misunderstandings. So I helped and helped as much as I could during that period when my, my other business was shut down anyway. Um, and then I realized there really is a business opportunity here. And I became really passionate about helping these entrepreneurs because as I dug into th their lives and their challenges, I realized how, um, how much they needed help with their marketing and their outreach. You know, there's just this, I guess, stigma around marketing that's really interesting. So I've been spending a lot of time thinking about that and, and working to bring that down. <laughs> oh, that's terrific. Because you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, there is some sort of interesting thought processes for people about the LinkedIn platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things is people think it's strictly for business, mm -hmm. which of course it yeah. is. Mm -hmm. However, you mentioned your your friends and family you originally connected with on LinkedIn. Um, tell us more about that. How does that is that still your main connection uh, for friends and family on L LinkedIn? So I don't communicate with my friends and family primarily on LinkedIn, but let's say the second, you know, well, not the second degree in, in LinkedIn terms, but sort of beyond my close family, you know, friends I haven't seen in a long time. Um, yeah, we do keep in touch uh, through through LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. It's not the way I use it, but I do tell all my clients to first connect. And even if they've been on LinkedIn for a while, to connect with all their friends and family, because it's not that they're going to, you know, sign up for a program with them or anything like that. But the power of LinkedIn, it's this network effect. And so as soon as somebody connects with you, you're connected, you know, second degree officially on LinkedIn to all of their connections. And that's the power of how that's how the network effect works. And so, you know, you can connect with your dentist and, you know, they may have somebody that they're connected to that could be your perfect client or somebody you'd love to, you know, have a fascinating conversation with. So you never know. And um, I think it's a myth to think that you're going to connect with people who are your clients. No, you're just connecting with people and the connections then lead to clients and that's that's one of the myths about uh, LinkedIn or misunderstandings misconceptions. yeah not just LinkedIn but networking mm -hmm. in general uh that's people cool. think oh well I, I have to network in order to get clients no mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. need to network so you can meet the people who may have the yeah. clients can be referred to you exactly yeah 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 absolutely yeah and and this is one of my pet peeves also people go to networking events to see what they can get. Mm. You need to go to a networking event to see what you can give and what you can contribute. And that's the power of networking is giving. And that's the basis of my entire program. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So tell us more about your Magnetize program. How, um, and, and first of all, people, if you are, listening to us on the awesome life podcast i love it please like and share and and comment and tell sophie and i what you you think of this but i'm interrupting in the middle here because sophie has behind her so come on over to uh, youtube and watch as well behind her she has uh portraits uh, of um Audrey Hepburn, one of my very favorite ladies in the universe. And uh, I'm a big fan of hers. <laughs> she She's just so beautiful. Come, come on over and we may have time to talk about Audrey Hepburn, get off on this subject a little bit. <laughs> but that magnetizes me to mm -hmm. Sophie. 
the fact that she likes obviously likes Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> it, it 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 tells me who she is. Yeah, it's uh, interesting in because way. I yeah sorry I I I rearranged my office and when I moved my desk. I, I, you know, I got onto a Zoom and I said, oh my gosh, this is so bland behind me. There's, it's too sad, you know? And so, because I had stuff behind on me on the wall before. So I quickly grabbed something before my call and stuck it up on the wall. And uh, it was just meant to be temporary. And then I had this whole wonderful conversation. I can't even remember who was with now, and I thought, well, if that's what's going to happen, great, you know, so I kept it and kept it. And now I'm, I'm here I am because everybody just associates that with me. And like, who, why, you know, wonderful person to be associated with. Plus, people can rest their eyes. They don't have to look at me. They can look at her. It's much <laughs> the eyes. Well, you're very beautiful as well. So you're right. Uh, it's ideal there. Uh, but we're uh, we're off a little bit. We are who we hang out with. And we are there inside of us. We are who we admire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so obviously, mm -hmm. the fact that you admire Audrey Hepburn I admire you, Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> Her wonderfulness can rub off on me. But yes, you, you were talking, you know, you were asking me about the magnet model. And yes. it really, um, it struck me that the way that I approach LinkedIn and I would say marketing in general is, is different in the sense, not unique necessarily, but different than a lot of people because I'm, I'm really against anything that has to do with um, outreach has has gotten a bad name so outreach is fine but it's often done in a very pushy manner in a very promotional self-promotional manner and I really feel that it's important to just recenter ourselves onto who we are and what we stand for and the work that we do and that if we share that broadly and generously with the world with our audience on LinkedIn gradually by this you know snowball effect and networking effect people who are attracted to us people who you know we want to connect with will be attracted to us and it's the process that I teach and it works amazingly well <laughs> yeah. well I, I thank you for for sharing that process because um one of the things that I have found on LinkedIn is when I talk to an expert, they they say, well, you should have Navigator. Mm -mm. And, and I am thinking, you know, LinkedIn offers so much. I don't need to invest in Navigator, do I? No, absolutely not. <laughs> to me, Sales Navigator is only useful if, if you first of all, are sort of a bigger company than us, right? We're solopreneurs or small business owners. Um, it's useful if you need to have thousands of leads on a continual basis because your business depends on having hundreds of clients every week, you know? Mm -hmm. So in that case, I, I suppose, you know, doing all the searches that you can do, it's a very powerful tool. It's an amazing tool, but I think for people like us, it's absolutely not necessary. And and often I I I tend to associate sales navigator with people who do outreach in the way that I don't think should be done. So usually people, you know, they'll they'll search for a whole bunch of criteria and then they'll have a list and then they'll send those direct messages that we all hate receiving. And they'll get all excited if they have a 2% response rate. So to me, that's no, that's a no, no, that's the network. That's, that's the marketing that I despise and <laughs> abhor. <laughs> strong words. I know, but the truth feelings. Well, it is true. And, and it's the way a lot of people teach. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, hey, you're on LinkedIn. It's all business, so I'm going to tell you about my business. Thanks for connecting. Here I am. I'm. Uh, you want to buy from me, mm -hmm. and and that's not 
for me. I just say, no, thank you very much. It's pleasure connecting. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy to have met you. Um, I'm not ready for you right now. Thank you so much. <laughs> you are much more polite than I am. <laughs> Those people, they make me angry and I just delete them. <laughs> but well, yeah, I, I figure if you're on LinkedIn, if, if you're on Facebook, it's an absolute no, just delete them. If mm -hmm. you're on Instagram, absolute no, just delete them. Mm -hmm. But LinkedIn is business mm -hmm. and that's what people are on their promoting. So yeah. I, I guess I have to honor them and, and recognize that's what they were taught and, and give them a break, but it's not for me and I'm not going to hang out with you. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you, you are uh, better than me at giving, uh, at assuming positive intent. And that's a good, it's a good mindset to have. So I, absolutely. They, they just don't know better, any better. The problem is that they give LinkedIn a bad, you know, a bad name. A lot of people just come on LinkedIn and they're like assaulted by all these messages and then they get disgusted and they leave. I mean, that's so many people I know. Um, so that's a shame. But no, there's, I, yeah, oh, go ahead. There, there's a way to actually minimize those messages. If you go to your settings um, and you go to notifications, you can reduce, um, I forget the exact wording, but you remove the notifications to, um, for in-mail, so messages from people you're not connected with are called in-mails, and you can turn off notifications of that. And oh. that does reduce the amount uh, quite a bit. Oh, that's good to know. I love those tips. <laughs> yeah. So, but there are people that you want to connect with. I mean, the whole point mm -hmm. for me in LinkedIn is to build my network. Mm -hmm. So how would you suggest in your, your magnetize uh, program, mm -hmm. what would be the first step that somebody would want to do? Mm -hmm. So if you see someone, if you come across someone in your, uh, on LinkedIn who you would like to connect with, so of course, if you know them or you've met them or they know somebody you know, you know pretty closely, you can just send them a connection request and state your reason why you'd like to connect and who you know in common or something like that. Um, but for the most part, if you don't know the person, I think the 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 right way to do it is to go to their their posts, to go to their content and leave a comment, you know, just start interacting with their content. And that way they'll see you. And if you do that two or three times, they'll recognize your name. And after that, if they haven't invited you yet, then you can send them an invitation to connect and say, you know, I enjoy your, your posts and maybe even say something about one of the posts that they made and, and that you'd like to connect. And with that system, you know, I, I get, it's not even a system, it's just a way of being. Um, I get 99.9% .9 acceptance on my connection requests you know I don't I don't go for the two percent of course I send less connection requests but I always connect with the people I want to so uh getting into my posts for example mm -hmm. people will come and they will uh comment on it and I can always respond to a comment but mm -hmm. if they just like or or heart or or something yeah what is the protocol mm -hmm. for responding to those people or should you just say nothing mm. so I I have a protocol for that I've you know established for myself and for my clients and it's to go, so first of all, you want to put in your in your post, you want to have an engagement question so that there's something for people to respond to, right? Something that they can sort of create a comment about. And um, then, uh, of course, respond to all the comments and maybe even respond with another question, you know, sort of keep the conversation going. With the reactions, um, I go through the list. What I recommend is going through the list of reactions 
And for those people who you don't know, or, you know, they, and they seem to be somewhat in a realm of people that you would like to connect with, you can send them a little message and say, thank you for liking my post. Would you like to connect? You, oh. you know, you can do that. And you'd have more chances of them, them accepting if you note, like, have they been liking several times? Of course, then there's much bigger likelihood that they will, you know, that they'll connect. Or you can and just go to their profile and follow them and then comment on their content, you know, same thing as before. And and keeping up that connection. And so say you're already connected as we are, mm -hmm. and you commented on my post. Mm -hmm. Would I again the etiquette on these different platforms is different so on linkedin the etiquette would be all right to say thank you just sending you a, a private message of thank you for commenting on my post and yeah i, I mean you know the etiquette is there's no established etiquette so we each make our own etiquette and for me send, sending a note saying you know thank you for um for for uh, liking my post or engaging with my post and remind people what the post was about because even if it's two minutes later you don't know what they've done in the meantime they, they'll forget who it was what it was they just remind them what the post was about that's that's what I always recommend and that's you know the yeah they'll likely just look at your profile at that point and decide what to do to connect or not Terrific, terrific. And um, do you have specific steps that you could share in your magnetize program, uh, magnet program, or is that something that you do for individuals based on their uniqueness? Mm -hmm. So there's definitely some overarching, you know, steps to take and and I do uh, customize it a lot in my one-on-one -on -one, uh, program but I also have group programs and I have an online course that I use as a basis for uh, these group coaching programs and and my one-on-one -on -one as well but to the the overarching steps are really to first of all have a create a, a profile that is um, what I call magnetic right which is really about capturing who you are, not just a resume, not just saying, you know, what you've done in your life, but really who, so first, you know, explain who you help, start with your audience, always, always, right, so who you help, who they are, how you help them, perhaps a little bit about their challenges, it depends, you know, how clear what you do is, um, and then um, what I say is you really want to zero in on your, your passion, your why. Like, why are you doing this work? I think that is so important to, to help people to really, um, to have something that resonates with them, you know, where there's this, could be this emotional connection of why you care so much about this. Um, and so your passion, the impact you want to have in the world, what your mission is, you know, eradicate something or, or solve a problem or help all these kinds of, you know, the, 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 the people that you help. Um, and then you want to have um, a little bit about your history, like how did you get to even be in this stage, right, in, in this, in this um, uh, doing the work that you do. Um, and then a small testimonial. So those that's kind of my formula for a good about section. And then there's other pieces to it, obviously. And then once you have a really solid uh, profile, um, then connect with as many people as you can and then start creating content. You know, short posts. That's one of my pet peeves is long posts. <laughs> short posts. I recommend, you know, a thousand to 1200 characters, not words, characters, um, and just make them really easy on the eye, um, easy to engage with. And um, yeah, that's, that's the overarching formula. <laughs> well, that's terrific. Very simple to the point and, and just really common sense isn't it yeah yeah then there's a lot of you know art and science behind how to do this and how oh, to you yeah. know but but overall that's those are the main steps 
Yeah. And just out of curiosity, what do you think about putting um, uh, video mm -hmm. on there as opposed to a written post? I think what's important is variety. So I don't do a lot of video myself, I'm not crazy about it, but that's just my personal preference. Once in a while, I'll do a little bit. Um, but having a mixture, you know, a variety of um, uh, text with an image, some, uh, some little bit of video, some people do only video and that's fine too. Mm -hmm. um, just make sure you have the captions because a lot of people will watch these videos um, on their phone and out and about and they may not have the volume up. Plus, you know, some people have uh, hearing uh, impairment. So make sure you have captions. And um, you can also do carousels. You can do, so what I mean by carousel is, you know, those uh, sliding, it's like a little mini slideshow. Oh, right. Um, yeah, with images. So you just basic a few words on each, but it makes it easy to go through content, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you can do polls, although I recommend don't do too many polls because then LinkedIn will start sending you a gazillion of them. So I, 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 I respond very <laughs> carefully, cautiously to those. Um, and I don't do them that often. But there's, you know, many formats. And I think the importance is, the important thing is really to keep it varied so that your audience has, you know, always different things to react to. Mm -hmm. yeah. And is there anything special to get those captions on there? I mean, if you're doing a, a video on, on LinkedIn itself. Uh... Yeah. Well, actually, when you upload a video, you should always do what, what they call native video, meaning that you upload the MP4 directly or the whatever format uh, directly onto LinkedIn, mm -hmm. um, LinkedIn will actually create captions. So you can create okay. them in a, in a external software. There's a bunch of them that, that create nice looking, uh, captions, but, um, but if not, you can just put it up on LinkedIn and actually it, it, if you click the right thing, it will, uh, generate the captions. That's something that changed a, a year or so ago. So, yeah. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And now LinkedIn also has a, a business um, offerings, creative business offerings there where you can have newsletters and things. Can, would you use LinkedIn exclusively for your newsletters? Yes. So, so uh, actually the, the whole uh, creator mode was something that came out a few years ago and it, it's, it's now being sort of phased out and everybody will have access to those, um, to all those tools like the LinkedIn lives and the, the, the newsletter. Um, so, yeah, I mean, having a newsletter is a great, is a great, um, you know, strategy or, or tactic rather. Mm -hmm. uh, for your business. So yeah, you can have a LinkedIn newsletter, you can have, um, yeah, you can do LinkedIn lives. Uh, yeah, I would recommend it. I love it. I love it. Well, my good, how can people reach out to you? How do they find your, your, uh, programs and. Yeah. So you can, uh, put in the show notes, the, the, my name and people can find it. Sophie Lechner. And you can also go to themagnetmodel.com. That's my website. Um, my favorite would be if you just um, connect with me on LinkedIn. Say you heard this podcast and I will definitely accept you. And um, and yeah, and then we can take it from there. There's a lot of resources on um, my website, but even there's a lot of resources on my uh, LinkedIn profile in the featured section. There's... 50 or 60 little mini lessons on uh, my LinkedIn profile in the future section. So check it out. And, and I, I can uh, attest to that. It's mm -hmm. she, Sophie gives wonderful information and she is a wonderful connector as well. She has connected me with some awesome people along the way. So it, it, it's so wonderful to know experts like you on LinkedIn specifically, Sophie. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. Much. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Karen. And I, I really appreciate your 
topic of, of, you know, life transitions, particularly I've had a bunch of them in my life. And this latest transition of becoming a coach for mission-driven entrepreneurs has just been the best. Um, it's, I feel like I finally, it's about time, right? But uh, several decades after starting my work, um, I think I finally found really what I love. And um, I would encourage everybody to really seek out what it is that you love in life so that you can go do it and, uh, and have fun with it. And that, thank you for that. And the fact is that you're never too old to start. You can always start. And honestly, I work with midlife women who are in that transition that mm -hmm. want to have an awesome life to release the faulty belief systems that are keeping them from enjoying the life that they're put on this earth to do. Mm -hmm. So it's never too late. Mm -hmm. I started when I was 50 and I finally started making it when I was almost 70. So, you know, it's never too late. You're a young chick. Come on, <laughs> Sophie, you're a young chick. And the fact that you found it so young, your, your passion, your moving forward is a real testimony to you and without all those things that we have experienced in the past mm -hmm. without those things that we have tried and succeeded at and quote fail I I don't like the word fail because yeah. the fact is as long as you learn from it you don't fail yeah you just learn and and don't make the same mistake again yeah, yeah, we've just accumulated so much wisdom, um, you know, and I, I feel strongly that it's really our duty to go and share that, share that with the world so we can enrich the world. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, Sophie, thank you so much for enriching our listeners today and joining me on the Awesome Life podcast. I'm Karen Stultz, and I am so grateful that you have joined us please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. It is free and our uh, marketing budget is your word of mouth. Mm -hmm. So please share. And until next time, be awesome. <laughs>